You're watching the latest edition of the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. My first guest is a board certified plastic surgeon. First time on the program, we've invited him on the program to discuss what you need to know if you are considering liposuction or a tummy tuck. My advice, stick around for the latest edition of the Wellness Hour. The Wellness Hour, an in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You're watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. My first guest is Dr. Bruce Landon. Dr. Landon is a board certified plastic surgeon. He has joined the team at the Cosmetic Surgery Institute in Palm Desert. We have invited him on the program today to discuss what you need to know if you're considering a tummy tuck or liposuction. Dr. Landon, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me, Randy. Okay, now before we get into today's topic, let's talk a little bit about your background, your training. You're new from Florida. Tell us about that. What made you come to the desert? Well. I did all my training in Southern California, Randy. I, I did uh, medical school at UCLA, did general surgery training and plastic surgical training in San Diego. And um, then uh, when I finished my training, decided to go over to Florida where I've been for the last 12 years and um, just ready to come back to so Southern now you're California. Back. Family my, here? It's my family's here, it's my hometown. So you're the new guy over there at uh, Dr. Zachary's office. So lucky enough to land there, Randy. Uh, you know, just a, from the minute I walked in there, just a great staff. You know, nothing contrived. Obviously, a very warm, personable experience for patients coming into the facility. And and Dr. Zachary was just a wonderful person. Moving on to today's topic, tummy tuck and liposuction. We'll talk about liposuction in the second half. With tummy tuck, anything new? The last 20 years? I think that the advantage, the advances in 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 tummy tuck surgery, Randy, have been in the realm of of incision location the type of suture material that we're using, the, the, the ease with which patients are getting up and becoming more mobile after this kind of surgery. Um, so it's been, it's been an advance in both the surgical procedure itself and then how we, how we preoperatively manage and, and, and how we postoperatively manage these people that's changed, I think, a lot in the last 10 years. Who's your typical patient for a tummy tuck? It's a, it's a very broad range of patients, Randy. I mean, we see people, mostly young, younger women, post-pregnancy, tried like crazy, been to the gym, been on a multiple dietary regimens, can't seem to lose that, that extra tummy skin and fat that, that, that's plagued them since pregnancy. That's a very big market for the tummy tuck. Um, we see an older population. We see women that, that um, you know, face it, women are, are staying much more vital for longer. They're much more socially and recreationally active and they're looking at ways to keep as fit and trim as they can. And, and some things are just, just naturally beyond their control. For the tummy tuck, what's the older patient? I mean, what's an older patient in, in the world of a tummy tuck? In the 70s. Is that not right? Not that uncommon. Okay. You know, we see, you know, 70, 70 years old is not, is not the same as when we, when we looked at our grandparents no when they it's were No kidding, it's vibrant 70. today. You know, these people are, are very, very recreationally and socially active, and, and, and they'd like to look as good as they can for as long as they can. Safety. I Tell think, me about safety. I think tummy tuck is a very safe is a very safe procedure. I think that some of the things that have given tummy tuck a bad name has been the 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 addition of tummy tuck to a multitude of other procedures all at the same time. But in and of itself, doing a tummy tuck, perhaps with a little bit of liposuction if it's necessary, is a very safe procedure. I think that that people can look at this procedure as a as a very readily available way to embark on some body contouring to improve their look and not need to, to worry about, you know, this, this inherently is a dangerous procedure because it's really not. What determines who's a candidate for tummy tuck? You look at them and say, you need a tummy tuck or you just need liposuction. People get stratified into two groups, Randy, when it comes to body contouring. There's those individuals that are candidates for liposuction and there's those that get funneled into the tummy tuck market. Liposuction patients typically have to have skin that has enough retained elastic potential to be able to accommodate to the fat loss that's been sucked out with the liposuction cannula. They also have to have the retained integrity to the abdominal wall musculature. If those individuals meet those criteria, then they're very good candidates for liposuction because it's a very effective body contouring tool. When they've exceeded, when their skin elastic properties are to the point where they no longer have the kind of recoil that's necessary to shrink to accommodate to the fat loss, when they've lost the normal configuration to the abdominal wall musculature by virtue of the fact that they've gained a lot of weight and lost a lot of weight by virtue of the fact that they've had pregnancies, 
then it pushes people into the tummy tuck market because the big advantage to tummy tuck is the ability to remove the fat in conjunction with the overlying skin and in addition have ready access to tightening up and restoring the integrity to the underlying musculature. So they get a triple effect out of that, lip, out of that, that tummy tuck procedure compared to the liposuction market that gets a, a if, if you will, a, a unidirectional method of attack, which is just removing the fat. We don't have access to the muscle compartment. We don't have the ability to do anything if the skin's not willing to cooperate. Okay, with the tummy tuck and stretch marks, uh, yeah, what, how big of an area of stretch marks can you get rid of? You typically can get rid of everything from the pubic, the pubic area or the pubic bone up to the hood of the belly button or the upper aspect of the belly button. And that's so where it's about a six or seven inch space. It's, some it's people. easily a six, seven inch space. Sometimes it's even a little bit longer. Um, this is the area where stretch marks tend to congregate. This is the area where a third trimester pregnancy causes the most massive amount of stretch of the abdominal wall. So this is the area that, 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 that thankfully the tummy tuck is able to remove. So, so any stretch marks that actually ex extend above and beyond the belly button hood they will still persist, but they'll be lower on the tummy wall, which people find a little bit more acceptable. Okay, I've had other surgeons on the show, and your partner, Dr. Mo Zachary, mm -hmm. on the show, uh, talking about tummy tuck as well, but I, I, let's hear your opinion. What's your philosophy and approach to it, and your technique? Where do you hide the incisions? Uh, you know, how aggressive do you get with the, I guess, the, the, the sides or the flank area? Mm -hmm. Let's start there. I think that, um, I think that it's, it's changed a lot over time, just like all the other procedures that we've talked about in the past, I think that there's, a, there's this natural evolution to something that you really find works the best for you and for the patient. I think that once upon a time, all tummy tuck incisions were low and flat. Then about- Low and flat where? Low and flat across the low bikini line area, extending from the pubic area in virtually a straight line onto the anterior front of the thigh area. Okay. And then there was a transition, Randy, to this high French cut bathing suit, undergarments that had a relatively high French cut leg. So the arms of these incisions or the sides of these incisions began to be modified. So it went from a horizontal incision to a more angled modification to accommodate these high French cut bathing suits so people weren't looking at incisions sticking out on the anterior thigh. And now it's gone back to some halfway in between. And what I typically do is have the patient stand prior to the procedure. I usually will ask them to bring a bathing suit or an undergarment that they wear on a regular basis because our goal is to confine the incision to areas that are not visible. All right. And most notably, those would be when people are wearing bathing suits on the beach or around the pool. So, you know, we, we, we spend a lot of time customizing the incision. So have they shortened, by the way? They have I mean, shortened to a degree. What dictates the length of the incision, Randy, is primarily how much skin's gonna be removed. Because we have the ability to do everything from what we call a mini tuck to a, 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 a more of a traditional tummy tuck, if you will. And we can talk a little bit about that more mini tuck in yeah, a little bit. Yeah, tell me, yeah. But the, the incision modification now, I have the patient stand right before surgery. Almost everybody, as they have that little bit of extra hanging skin, will have a natural division between what's really the skin of the upper thigh and where this extra skin is kind of folding over in the low tummy area. Yeah. And we follow the confines or the contours of that area because it gives a very nice natural lie after the procedure's over. So we, we, we really do modify the procedure. It's, it's, it's very customized to the individual because there's not one particular disposition of that scar that will fit every comer. Yeah, now, you know, this is something you don't see at the beach, the, this look. You know, I was talking to Dr. Zachary. He was showing me some of these before photos. And so when I thought of a tummy tuck, I'm thinking of a large person, mm -hmm. but there are thin people after pregnancy that just have some really loose skin right there. Right. Tons of stretch marks. Yeah. And another thing I wanna ask you, as far as pulling, are you pulling it up? Are you pulling it down? Because you're removing the huge area. Yeah. So what are you doing? I mean, it's it's more of a, I, I it, never have gotten it yet. It's a it's 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 a ninety percent pulling down, with a ten percent advantage of some anterior thigh lift as a consequence of what you're pulling. I okay. mean, if you think about Randy, the 
patient stretched out on the table in a laying position, removing the skin from the belly button to the pubic bone, in essence, maybe six to seven inches of skin, in order for us to get that effectively closed, you're really dissecting up towards the rib cage to pull down the upper skin to the lower skin so that it can be closed effectively. And in so doing, not only do you get the upper coming down to the lower, but you naturally get some of the lower coming to the upper. They get some improvement in that mons area and they get some definite improvement in the lateral thigh as really a side benefit of closing the incision. And then the patients are actually flexed on the operating room table. They get a little bit of back up, they get a little bit of leg up, and this gives us the extra advantage of taking a little bit more tissue so that when they have that period of slightly stretching out in the post-operative period that we've accommodated for that little bit of extra stretch so they maintain that nice tight tummy despite that little bit of normal relaxation that everybody gets after surgery. So you surgery. can pretty much flatten anybody's stomach out. You really can. I mean, it's just flat. You pick your patients wisely. If you've picked a good candidate, in your opinion, for a tummy tuck, you can give them a flat tummy. Are you good at the tummy tuck? I, I mean, is this one of your favorite procedures? I like doing tummy tucks. I think that the body image change that people experience is overwhelming. It's, it's up to par with a breast enhancement. Yeah, you know, it, people really, they can stand in front of the mirror, Randy, and they can say, you know, I, I'm, I, I feel like I did pre-pregnancy. I feel like I did a few years ago. They get excited about it. Now with dress sizes or pants sizes, what do they tell you? Can they go down a couple? They can absolutely go down a couple. I have not seen your tummy tuck photos yet, but one of the things that I see, oftentimes with a tummy tuck, is blocky look, mm -hmm. a square box. Okay, now Dr. Zachary doesn't have that look. On his. What about yours? I don't think so. I think that I think that that's something that I've learned also over time. And is that I, and combining it with lipo? Is that is the combined. only way to avoid it, or it's, is it? It's it's combining with lipo, and it's also a matter of, of, you know, a, a big component of that boxy look, can be what's going on in that fascial and muscle compartment. So in order to get that that curvaceous look that people want to get then sometimes it's not just a matter of removing and, and managing the skin compartment and tightening up the tummy that way, but it's also a matter of how you're doing the muscle tightening underneath. I think it's a very much a combination of how much skin is removed, where it's removed, the amount of lipo that you do, and how you're tightening up the muscle compartment. Now if you go to a person, a doctor, that a surgeon that uh, does a lot of these, does it make you more aggressive? I mean, are you more aggressive now than you were? Maybe aggressive is the wrong term. Yeah. When I'm, it comes to the procedure? I think I'm absolutely more aggressive. I think that the dictum when we left our training a dozen years ago was you don't do liposuction when you do a tummy tuck. Right. I've it's, been, last week, a guy from Manhattan, plastic surgeon, says to me, I, I never do them together. Yeah. You know, it was, that was the way that we were all taught. It's too dangerous. You're, 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 you're damaging the blood supply. Is it too dangerous? To absolutely not. We, there's been, a, there's been a, a host of great papers, very scientific, very clinical in nature, that have shown where the blood supply is the most robust, where it's the worst, what you can get away with and what you can't. And, and, and to a degree, Randy, that takes some experience too. You've got to do some aggressive procedures and see what you're going to get away with until you settle upon a knowledge base that says, you know, I can, go, I can, suck, I can suck fat here but I can't hear. And, and I think that those of us that have been doing it for long enough now know, look, in order to get the result that people want, you have to give them a combination of both. If you say... So you think it's a mistake then for this guy? I absolutely think it's a mistake. I think that if you do one without doing the other, you know, one method, And we're talking about liposuction yeah, and tummy I'm tuck together. Liposuction and tummy tuck. If you do the tummy tuck alone and you don't pay some attention to what's going on in the hip and flank, maybe the high lateral buttock area, you will get that you're box gonna look. An, you're going to have an unhappy patient, and that patient guaranteed is going to come back to you. So and from say, the you side, know, they'll look good, right. but straight on, they won't. They're going to say, I love this, I hate this. Interesting. Our goal is, I love this, I love this, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so this is obviously a happy group of patients. It is. But what about I, pain, though? It seems like a very, yeah, you're talking about the muscles, sewing the muscles together. Yeah. I think that, I think that there's a number of different things that have, that have changed a little bit over the years, Randy. At least in my particular practice, what I do is we, we inject the areas where we sew the muscles together with a very long-acting local anesthetic. We also inject the skin closure with a long-acting anesthetic. What that does, Randy, is it gets them through that immediate post-operative period 
very comfortably and allows them to get started on a regimen of oral pain control that seems to be that seems to work very well. When are they back to work? Or could they be back to work? In my in my previous patient population in Florida, you know, I asked them for 10 days to two weeks. I think that that's a very respectable amount of time for somebody. Do you ever have stories that people say, I was back in a week? Absolutely. Even though you told them not to. There's always those people that are outside the curve. There's always the ones that go back very soon that kind of scare you a little bit. And there's always the ones that are just a little bit outside the bell curve. But in a working population, you know, the worst thing that I can do is give people an unrealistic expectation of when they can go back to work. If I tell them, look, you know what? Nine out of 10 of my patients can go back at a week. They put themselves back on a shift schedule and they can't show up for that shift, then they get, then they, then, then, then of course they're, they're unhappy, they're upset, they should be back at work, but they're not, they're getting called by the boss, their coworkers. It's about 10, 15 days. I tell them two weeks. To relax. I tell them two weeks, you know, you're gonna be, you're, you're never gonna be an invalid with this procedure, you're gonna be taking care of your you own walk daily around. needs, walking around, but, but in order to give yourself, if you have the flexibility to do so, two weeks will really set you in good standing. And these incisions are pretty hidden. I mean, I mean a woman can wear a bathing suit? Absolutely. Okay, your partner, Dr. Mo Zachary, is on the show. He thinks he's the best guy in the world yeah. when it comes to the belly button. He said, you really gotta focus on that belly button. Tell me about what you do to preserve the belly button. I guess you could really stretch it out or yeah. make it phony looking. Yeah, yeah it, the, biggest, the biggest giveaway from a tummy tuck when somebody's wearing a two-piece bathing suit is the belly button, because you can't see the incision, incision. We just talked about the fact that we, hid, we hide it into the bikini area. But that belly button's still out there for all the public to see. What's changed a little bit with belly button dynamic is if you leave it, after you disconnect it from the surrounding skin attachments when you start to remove all the extra skin, and then when you're ready to bring it back out through this new nice tummy wall, if you leave it as a floppy entity, then the scar tends to be very visible. And what, what a lot of good tummy tuck surgeons do is we take the belly button we sew it back down to the underlying muscle compartment. And what that does is it takes the surrounding skin and provides this natural little bit of clefting in towards the belly button, which gives this very natural look. Because we weren't born with bellies that were just flat from top to bottom. Yeah. We've got a little bit of natural intrinsic curve. And there is natural intrinsic curve around that belly button. So by sewing that muscle down and taking away that looseness that you one would get if you just left it flopping around, it does two things. It provides that natural little indentation and it also takes that scar and pulls it well into the belly button, making it a less visible entity. Mini tummy tuck, what is that? What defines that? Mini tuck for me defines, Randy, anything less than what we would consider to be a full boat tummy tuck. And most specifically, those women who really don't have much skin laxity, they really don't have any extra fat by virtue of the fact that they've been working out like a fiend, they've got a very aesthetically pleasing figure, but what they couldn't control with all the working out in the world is the relaxation and splaying a part of the muscle compartment. So the muscle pooches out. Pregnancy. Exactly, they get that roundedness from the belly button to the pubic bone. But I don't see that very often. And they hide Just, it. They, okay. they, they wear certain types of clothing that doesn't accentuate it. But when they stand in the mirror looking at themselves from the side, they see a very aesthetically pleasing figure, and then they see this roundedness that they comes cannot out and control. Tight so what a that's mini, the muscles? That's the muscle. Okay. So what a mini tuck gives us the ability to do, Randy, is make a small incision, as small as about three to four inches at the, in the top of the pubic area, actually dissect on the top of the muscle compartment, sew the muscles back together from the belly button to the pubic bone. Wow. It restores the flatness to the area, and, and that, you don't have to go wide with the scar. You don't have to go wide. That, and that can be done with or without a camera assist. We can actually make the incision as small as two inches and be assisted with the use of a, of a camera and an endoscope. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back talking about liposuction. Final thoughts, final, anything we left out about tummy tuck? What they need to know, what they should look for in a surgeon? I think for anybody that's out there that's, that's you know, either having something hanging over their pants or tucking it into the pants and wants to get rid of it, there's procedures out there that are for them. Great. Okay, you're watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez with us. We have board certified plastic surgeon, the newest member of the team at CSI or Cosmetic Surgery Institute in Palm Desert. We're discussing liposuction up next. We'll be right back. 
Hi, I'm Marissa, esthetician here at CSI. I'd like to tell you about dermaplaning. Dermaplaning removes dead skin cells, minimizes pores, and will instantly make your skin feel smoother and softer. Dermaplaning combined with a clinical skin treatment and finished off with an application of mineral makeup, you will leave here with your skin feeling healthy and more vibrant. I smile more, uh, and I smile more with, uh, with confidence. And the staff is fantastic, and they really, really take an interest in the work there. It's when you go there, you're, you're taken in right away. They're actually waiting for you. Yeah, I do get a lot of compliments. When you're looking for pure artistry in cosmetic dentistry, contact Dr. Don Brown. I made the call. Do you have children in college and you pay their tuition and other expenses of education? Did you know you can get an above the line deduction of up to $4,000? Talk to your accountant about this. If you feel you are not getting all of the deductions you are entitled to, make the call to the Stan Moreau's company. I made the call. You're watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know about tummy tuck and or liposuction. With us, we have board certified plastic surgeon, the newest board certified plastic surgeon in this town, Dr. Landon. Dr. Landon, welcome Thank back you. to the program. Um, liposuction, do you like doing it? Do you like doing it. You do, yep. because I meet surgeons, and, I, and, 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 I, and I, when I met Dr. Ball, who's retiring, okay, that he liked it, and nine out of 10 doctors that I meet said, I don't want to do liposuction, it's tedious, but you like it. Why do you like it? I do like it. You know, it's, a, it's, 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 it's such a huge component of the arsenal for body contouring, and that's a huge number of consultations that we see in the practice. It gives people a great body image change. It, people gravitate away from it, Randy, because it is tedious. It's exhausting. It's time-consuming to do liposuction, and it's a very evolving market. We're being barraged at the moment with, with new procedures for doing liposuction and, um, and, and I think that once you start to get a host of new procedures, the older surgeons that have been most used to the more traditional techniques tend to start shying away from it. They're saying, I can't keep up with the new technology. Okay, now what, what do you say to the guy that tells me, the surgeon that says, I don't do liposuction because anybody can do liposuction. Liposuction is, is, is you smirk when, I, when you answer fina that. It's true finesse. I mean, it, so it's, there is technique. It's artistic talent and technique. Dr. Craig Ball was an absolutely superb liposuction artist. Now you use the word contouring. I mean, aren't you just sucking fat? Are you really contouring or sculpting? I think I always feel like that's an overstatement of what it really is. I think it's contouring. I think the biggest misconception that people come to the office with, Randy, is I want to lose weight and I want liposuction to do it. Liposuction is not a weight management tool. Yeah, why tool. not diet and exercise though? I'm asking you, because you guys are doing some sh patients that are in decent shape. If they, if they can do it, I think that it's, it's applaudable and, and, and that's what they should do. They should adopt a, a, a non-surgical tact. Most of the people that come for liposuction, Randy, have tried, they've tried multiple things. It's very rare that you get somebody that comes to the surgeon as the first outreach for help. They've okay, usually, good they've, point. They've usually gone to the Jenny Craigs of the world. They've gone to weight management physicians. They've sometimes been on appetite suppressants. These are individuals that need, they need something that they can tangibly look at and take home that can be the catalyst to keep them on track. So liposuction can be very effective for those people that have really tried and failed everything. And, and, and now I can give them something that they can go home and they can look in the mirror and they can say, you know, I'm gonna stick with the gym, I'm gonna stick with a good diet because look at my new shape. Do you find that, by the way? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in Florida, it. you do their liposuction and now they take better care of themselves. It acts Gives as, them a jump start. It is a jump start. It, it's a jump start and it's a catalyst, Randy, to take these people to the next level. Now, does that mean that some people don't fail liposuction? Sure, they fall off the wagon. They look great and then they just fall back into those poor dietary habits, lack of, ex lack of exercise, you can gain everything that we took off. Now what about all areas of the body? 
Some guys do, some guys don't. I mean, are you doing arms? Are you doing the back? Absolutely. I mean, I think that um, there's, there's really, there's, there's very few no-touch zones when it comes to liposuction. I think it's very prudent, though, when people come in for their consultation, they need to know that some areas are much more effectively managed than others, Randy. Like? I mean, when it comes to arms, you know, this is the traditional area, this, this, this back of the arm or tricep area. And, and usually they've been told by friends, by family, by primary care physicians, go work out, it'll get better. Well, you can, you can increase the size of that musculature, but you can't do much for that fat compartment. The reason that it doesn't do so well with liposuction is that the quality of the skin is okay. not so good there. So what's There's, the answer then for these people? Conservative liposuction can help. Sometimes they get elevated to yet another type of a surgical procedure which involves more excisional management of the skin. You do those? We do those. Those are brachioplasties where the amount of fat in conjunction with the amount of extra skin has exceeded what the liposuction can do alone. Some of the skin needs to be removed in conjunction what with the What about going fat. around the body? I think for, for the- For example, 360 degrees or around the thighs, things like that. Total body- Where do you stand there? Total body contouring can be very effective. I mean, it, it can give people a true magical change in body image. I've had patients go down as much as eight dress sizes with a, with a circumstantial torso change. Okay. But you have to pick the right candidate. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a pretty significant surgical procedure. It's a few hour procedure. You need a well, healthy individual without a preponderance of, of pre-existing I mean, everything conditions. we're talking about obviously is patient selection. Absolutely. I mean, results aren't typical and we'll have to put those disclosures yeah. on the program, but are the results typical? That means if you decide, hey, I'm gonna do the surgery, for the most part, you've screened them, you think it's safe and they'd be good candidates. Yeah. That's my job. That's but that's what the consultation's all about. Otherwise, I mean, you know, as nice as it would be to take phone to take phone calls and say, "Come on in, you're on surgery schedule tomorrow." You know, it, we've got to look these patients over, Randy. I Are mean, you aggressive with liposuction? Very aggressive. I think that, and that's one thing that I've learned over the past, you know, dozen years in practice. I think that everybody that does liposuction, Randy, gets more aggressive as the years go on within certain limits. Yeah. Florida, we had very significant limits on the amount of fat that could be removed in one sitting. They're a little bit more flexible here in the state of California. Interesting, so you could remove more here. You can remove a little bit more here. Now, I always tell people, you know, that because they, who, who should you go to for lipo? And, and when I'm in San Diego or whatever, I say, go to somebody that likes to do it. Right. I always tell them that most guys don't like to do it because I think you'll do a better job, right? And get more aggressive. Yeah. So I, you're one of those guys, you like to do it. I think that you have to go to somebody that likes to do it. I think if you don't, you're gonna end up with something less than what you hope you're gonna get out of it. Final message, somebody considering a tummy tuck or lipo. Uh, what do you want them to know about you? Come into the office, at least I, I or Dr. Zachary can do a very good job of educating them as to what procedure is gonna be the most effective for what, for what they wanna get out of the whole thing. All right, I wanna thank you for coming on the show. Nice to meet you, thank by you the way. Thank you very much. First time I met you me. today. You've been watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like to view this interview again online, visit our website at wellnesshour.com. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.